Hey, question 7 pretty big one. So, uh, a train travels along a straight horizontal track between two stations A and B. In a model of the motion, uh, the train starts from rest at A and moves with a constant acceleration of 0 0.3 meters per second squared for 18 seconds. Uh, the train then moves at constant velocity for it moves with a constant deceleration of 0 0.5 meters per second squared coming to rest at B. Part A uh, says for this model of the motion of the train between A and B, part 1 uh, state the value of the constant velocity of the train. Okay, so for part A1, we know that U is equal to 0, we know the acceleration is 0 0.3. Um, meters per second squared and we know the time that it's doing that for is 80 seconds so there is a Suvat equation that will help us for this but think about it logically it's accelerating at 0 0.3 meters per second per second so for every one second its speed or velocity increases by 0 0.3 meters every second so our final velocity here is going to be 0 0.3 times 80 which is 24 meters per second Uh, the Suvat equation that could have helped us with that is the top one, V is U add AT. So that's exactly what we've done. Acceleration times time, U is equal to zero. Okay, then part two. One says to state in the time for which the train was decelerating. Okay, so for part two, we know that U is now the 24, uh, because that was our constant velocity. So when we start decelerating, that is our initial velocity. We know that V is equal to zero because we come to rest at station B and we know our acceleration is minus 0 0.5 because it's decelerating at 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So again Using, <coughs> using the same Suvat equation, we get 0 is equal to ut. No, it's not, sorry, it's just u. So 0 is equal to 24 minus 0. 0.5 t. So if we add t term, 0 0.5 t is equal to 24. So t, if we times by 2, t is 48. Go. Cool. Okay, then part 3. 
uh, wants us to sketch a velocity time graph. So, power table together is only worth three marks. This literally does just need to be a sketch, because it's only one mark. So, Okay, so, obviously, in the real thing, use a ruler. So that, our axes, so we got time along the bottom, so let's call that S, and velocity up the side, so that's V meters per second. Now, for the first part, we had a constant acceleration, so... That means then we have a slanty line. Now we could put in, you know, that was up to 80 seconds, and we got up to a velocity of 24. But we don't need to, but we can. Uh, and then we know we had a constant. Velocity, but we don't know how long for. So that's just a horizontal line. And then we know we decelerated. Now our deceleration was, or had a higher magnitude than our acceleration at the start. So this line would need to be steeper than the first line. So something like that and you are golden. Okay, then we're told the total distance between A and B is 4,800 meters. Using the model, find the total time taken by the train to travel from A to B. Okay, so on a velocity time graph, the area under the graph is the distance travelled. So what we need to do is play around with our graph. So we can work out, let's split this into three regions. So D1, D2 and D3. Now we know that D1 and D2 and D3 So D1 and D2 and D3 is equal to 4,800 So we can work out D1 It's area of a triangle so our base is 80, our height is 24. So, D1 is 80 times 24 all over 2. Now that gives us uh, 960. Now we can also work out D3 in exactly the same way. So, we know the time along the bottom was 48 seconds. So for D3, we're doing 48 times 24 over 2. So D3 is 48 times 24 over 2. And that gives us 576. So, what we now know are two of these three areas. So we can now actually work out what D2 is. So D2 is the total distance, 4,800 minus... 960 minus 
five, seven, six. Now that gives us d2 is equal to uh, 3264. So, now that we know the distance in D2, 3264, we can find the time where we had this constant velocity. So, the area of the rectangle is 3264. We know the height of the rectangle is 24. So now we do uh, 3, 2, 6, 4, divided by the height, 24, and that will give us the length along the bottom, which is the time. So that gives us, um, 136 seconds. So the total time is the 80 add 136 add 48 and that will give us uh, 264 seconds go okay then for part C we want to suggest one improvement that could be made to the model of the motion of the train from A to B uh, in order to make the model more reliable. Okay, so I'd say the big one that we have assumed is constant acceleration. Now, acceleration is not going to be constant. As your velocity increases, so too to resistant forces such as air resistance. So what we could do is instead of assuming constant acceleration, assume variable acceleration and in our graphs we would be using curves instead of straight lines for the acceleration. Cool.